beautiful people, welcome back. I hope everyone is having an amazing day today. And in today's video, as y'all already saw in the thumbnail, we are gonna be getting into the newest release from Natasha Denona. This is the Circo Loco palette. And I'm actually really excited to talk about this today because I have a ton of thoughts. I've already sat down and done, I think, three eye looks. We're gonna do one more on camera together. Now, of course, we will get going into the eye looks, all of that, you know, swatches, whatnot. But also with this palette, I do have some other pros and cons I wanna touch on because there's a lot of little things that I'm noticing with this palette that are really, really good, but there's also things that I think are making it a little bit, um, a little bit intimidating, things that I think are kind of throwing people off. So I'm just going to go through and kind of touch on everything that I've noticed, again, all the eye looks and whatnot. But before we get going into all of that, before we get into the actual meat and potatoes of this video, I like to pause at the start of everything and just introduce myself for anybody that might be new. My name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And then, of course, my usual spiel, okay? The spiel of my lifetime. If you haven't done so yet, please, please go follow me over on Instagram. Everything will be linked down below, but I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers over there. And uh, truthfully, you guys, I put a ton of work into that platform. There's everything over there from plus-size fashion, styling tips, OOTDs, you know, makeup reels, testing new makeup, all of that. And then that's also the place to find me for, like, unboxings, day-to-day -day stuff, if I'm going to the doctors, if I'm going shopping. I really just like taking you guys with me, you know, in this life and like hanging out and building the sense of community. And for me, that is what Instagram is. If you're into any of that, or if you just like me and my personality, again, I would really, really appreciate it. If you would take a second, check that out. Again, I'm trying to hit 10K. So everything is linked down below. And then also speaking of things linked down below, I will have everything that I use in today's video, everything that is on my face. If you're curious, foundation, blush, brows, all of that, it will be in the description box as well. And by the way, this shirt is from Torrid. Oh my God, you guys. Speaking of following me on Instagram, I just posted, and you know what? I'll leave this down there too. Torrid was having, I don't know when you guys are watching this, but regardless of when you're seeing this, okay, on Saturday, I was talking over on Instagram about how Torrid was having this 30% off sale, and I went through their site, and I linked a bunch of stuff, you know, stuff that I thought was cute, stuff that I bought, and one of them is this shirt. It's a quote from Edgar Allan Poe, and it says, there is no beauty without some strangeness, and I freaking love this. Not, not only do I love Edgar Allan Poe, okay, I was in like what grade was I in? Probably sixth grade when I bought my first Edgar Allan Poe um, short stories book. And ever since then, I was just hooked. Just there was something about him, his writing style. Like he he had such a depth to him. Like his, his mind would just go places. And I thought it was just always so awesome. Moral of the story, okay? I got this shirt from Torrid and I am absolutely obsessed with it. Like the cut, the fit, it's tie-dye, it's got a Poe quote on it. Like this, this is just my life. Um, So I'll have this link down below and I will also link if you are into Torrid, which you should be. Um, I'll also have the the little thing that I curated um, down below, just some cute things you can shop, stuff I have picked up, you know, my favorite bras in there. I, there's a tank top, like a core support tank top um, that's in there. And just, yeah, just a bunch of cute stuff. So I'll have that link down below as well. Anyways, with all of that being said, with my little spiel done and over with, let's go ahead, zoom the camera in, and let's get started because I have got so, I've got so much to say. All right, so I just wanna give you guys a little bit of brief info before we get into the eye look. Um, starting off with the price point on this because it actually retails for $129. And uh, that's in comparison to a a lot of her other palettes that she's been doing at 65, they're a little bit smaller, but uh, quality and everything is the same. They're just smaller, ergo they cost about half as much. But uh, this one right here retails for 129 and in the description, I'm pulling this from the Natasha Denona website because it has more info than Sephora, but I'll have Sephora linked down below. But um, it says on here, express yourself with the Natasha Denona Circo Loco Eyeshadow Palette, featuring 15 new shadows of Natasha's signature pressed and cream powder formulas, ranging from light pastels to highly vibrant pigments and pearls. Inspired by the characters of the circus, this lively and colorful collector's palette consists of three main color families, pinks, oranges, blues, and blues with purples, all of which contain Natasha Denona's classic matte and metallic formulas. All right, so from there, I wanna give you guys just a little info out of the description box just about kind of how I do my shadows because if you're looking for a tutorial on this palette, this one specifically, I think it's really going to be um, heavily weighted on the person doing the tutorial because obviously everyone has their own style. Everyone has like their own way they like to do it. And I am someone, you know, I'm 31 years old. If you don't know if you're new here, um, I'm 31. I own a business in real life. I own two businesses with my dad. And so I'm a much more of like an on the go person. I do, you know, YouTube a ton during the week. I put up three videos. I do Instagram every single day. And so for me, having an eyeshadow look that is beautiful, that is vibrant or, you know, natural, obviously if I want it to be natural, but ultimately it can be all of these things and still 
still be simple. And so something that I look for personally in a palette is a palette that can do everything that I want it to do. You know, give me that crease color, give me that pop. I can put one color all over the lid, blend it out and call it a day. And so for me looking at this, that's something that weighed very heavily on like my choices and my eye looks. And take today for example, this is actually a perfect example. Um, when I leave this room after I'm done filming this tutorial, I actually have to have, you know, more photos taken and, and go do other things. And so I don't really want to be out here having like bright orange or bright purple on my eyes. And so for the first look I'm going to be showing you this one, it's going to be more on the demure side, something that is going to be, you know, more so focused on toning this palette down, but still using it in a fun, more wearable-esque way. And I say all of this because I think it's important, especially with this palette, um, because there are going to be so many options that are technical with lines and wings and, you know, eyeshadow looks that take 40 minutes to create. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're absolutely stunning. But for me, I don't ever want to create looks for you guys that I wouldn't actually wear. Like if, if I can create it on here, that's great. But if I wouldn't take the time to do that in my day-to-day -day life or before work or whatever, I, I don't want to do the look on here because I just, I don't know, I don't feel like it's true to my aesthetic or how I do my makeup. But anyways, with all of that said and done, now that we're on the same page, no pun intended, now that we are tracking, bitch, we are running through the woods together trying not to hit the branches. I have no idea where I was going with that analogy, but we're going to glaze. And uh, let's talk about this palette. I'm going to actually be leaning today into the more like orange bronze tones because while I could mix these two pinks together and go in that direction, work it through the crease, I'm not really feeling that. I would just, I think that for me, this one would be much more of like a practical, you know, day-to-day -day kind of stance. And so how I'm going to start this off actually is a way that I love to do my eyeshadow all the time. And that is with some of my bronzer, just run through the crease to set everything down and give me a good blended out option. First things first, I'm going to take just a little bit of my concealer that I used today. This is the, of course, the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend. This is in the shade Fair. And I am going to work that all over the lid just to make sure we have a good little base. All right, so as I said before, I'm just taking this bronzer. This is the Fenty, which is what I use today, the Fenty Sun Stalker in In the Sun Powder Bronzer, which, by the way, um, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I also, over the weekend, made a little favorites list for Fenty because they were having uh, a 25% off, yeah, 25% off friends and family sale. And I'll leave that link down below too if you want to shop it because I think it's going on until 322, I think is when that sale ends. And it's actually Fenty makeup as well as um, Fenty skincare if you're into that. For me personally, I haven't had much luck with their skincare, but their makeup is a fantastic. And this is in my little link. So I'll make sure that I link that down below if you want to shop some Fenty and save some money. Bitch, I will hook you up. While we're on the topic, I will leave linked down below my little favorites list that I made um, from Good American, just like I did with Torrid. They were having a 25% off friends and family sale. And uh, I'll leave that link down below too if you want to check them out because I highly recommend Good American. Easily, I would say top five favorite brands, like Good American, all the way. Quality, amazing. The fit, the, oh, everything is so good. And the styles themselves are just so well put together. It's just, I never stop being obsessed. Now that I have the bronzer through the crease, let's get into this palette. And I actually think just as like a nice day-to-day -day option, I would pop this all over my lid. Okay. So is anybody else absolutely deceased over that shade? It is so rich and so opaque and so freaking shiny. Like it almost looks wet. That's how shiny that is. And that's with nothing on my hand, like no glitter glue, no primer, no nothing and it just looks gorgeous. So I think what I want to do because this shade really could like stand on its own if I just put it on here with the bronzer blended it together it would be gorgeous but I want to take it just one like a little step farther than that and pay a little bit better homage to this orange undertone. So I'm gonna go in with this shade right here this is the shade Firework and it's just a light matte orange shade you can see right here and I just very very lightly I don't want to go in with a lot I just want to take that and kind of marry it with the bronzer and you can see it just adds ever so gently, like literally no pressure and very little product here because the shades in this palette are very, very rich. So I just want to take a little amount and kind of fluff it in together. Okay, so now that we're kind of to a place where we can just coast on this eye look, you know, we, we know what's going on here. Um, I am going to also talk to you guys about refer brushes because this is not sponsored. This is all just me. I've talked about it on Instagram and I'm talking about it on here because they just came out with this little four piece eye brush set and I am freaking obsessed with these profiles. This is the number 26, 27, 28, and 29. And it's a little four piece set and I'm really hoping when I put this up that it's not sold out in the concept store 
store yet because currently on their concept store, I believe it is on sale for $52 for all four of these brushes, which by the way, I will have my link for these down below. If you want to shop it through my link, I would obviously appreciate it. It is an affiliate link, but these brushes are fan freaking tastic. But um, right now in their concept store, which is where everything is on sale, they currently have this new eye bundle, which would normally be $88. It is on sale for $52. They have their core eye trio, which is their original three eye brushes, absolutely amazing freaking eye brushes, by the way. That is normally um, a $72 trio on sale for $39. $39, okay? Are you freaking kidding me? And then they also have in there one a face brush right now. I believe the face brushes are in the process of being restocked so they could only launch the one, but it is brush number four. And instead of $39, that one is currently on sale for $23. And again, it is a fantastic, do I even have mine? Oh man, this one's number five. I thought, I thought for once I actually had the exact brush I needed, but uh, number four compared to number five, number five is more of like a rounded dome brush. Whereas number four, the one in the concept store for 23 for $23. Guys, the the quality for $23. Bucks. Um, but that one is more of a an angled brush because it's a cheek brush, so it does have a slight slant to it. Anyways, all of that to be said, all three of those, again, the two eye sets or that single brush, they are all available in the concept store on super duper sale, and I highly, highly recommend them. Also, just as a real quick side note here, back, back to the eyeshadow look, I'm going in now with uh, this shade, the shade Canon, and I'm taking that just on my finger and lightly pressing it all over my mobile lid, but I'm not going in with any glitter glue or anything because truthfully glitter glue I think would make it a little bit too intense for what I'm going for so I'm just gonna lightly like look at that that's with nothing but my finger oh, oh my god it's so good uh, but I'm just gonna take and lightly kind of pack and press this all over and blend it out. But with Refer, guys, I can't express to you how different it is dealing with them versus like being talked down to by so many other brands. They are just so different. Like the way that they treat small influencers and the way that they, like they, they seek us out, they want our opinion. And obviously, you know, in the end, are they still trying to sell brushes and do they care about the bottom line? Yes, I'm sure they would or they wouldn't be in business. But I just think, oh my God, my lips are so busty. It's so next level crusty. Um, but I just think that with them, there's something so, so special special about a brand that they care about a small influencer and the way that they treat you. So really quick here, I'm just taking some of that orange shadow and uh, fluffing it very, very lightly onto the lower lash line just because I want like a little bit of color, but I don't want it to be too overbearing. So I'm just going to take a little bit here and then lightly fluff that up into the outer V here just to make sure everything is nice and blended. But anyways, with Refer, again, on the uh, the small influencer side of things, not only do they treat us good and they treat us fair, like they, they don't come out here and say, here, talk about this, do this for free, we want you to do this. Like they, they don't ever make demands of anything. Even aside from the influencer side of it, if you want to support a brand and you want to give your money to a brand that genuinely cares about you and that cares about like your perspective, what you're looking for, again, Refer is the way to go because by the way the whole thing with this concept store they create these brushes right like they make these and the, the price point on this set the the new one here is $88 but instead of saying hey here's a brush set that's $88 Refer says you know what actually how about we sell you this brush set at a severely discounted price of 50 what is it 52 bucks and in exchange for that all we ask from you is that what that you give us referrals, that you buy something later, that you sign up for an email. No, okay, none, literally none of that. All they ask in return is that you tell them what you think. What gets me too is that that's all they ask of you, right? Is this freaking survey, this one little thing. Tell us about our brushes. Is there anything you like, you hate? You can literally light into this brush and talk about it's awful, it's scratchy, I hate the profile, whatever. Which by the way, it's none of those things. Okay, it's absolute perfection. Um, but you can fill out whatever you want on this form. And it's not even a required form. It's literally just them asking you, hey, if we give you a hell of a good discount on a hell of a nice brush that we designed per your instruction, will you just give us your feedback? Will you tell us what you think? Because ultimately at the end of the day, all they care about, truly, and I and I believe this now more than ever, all they care about is making sure that you are happy with their brushes. So it's a little bit long and drawn on. I didn't mean to talk this much, but I just wanted to take a second and talk about them because I think that, you know, that maturity and that level of care, I don't want it to go unnoticed. I don't want to be that person, and I've said this before, that only points out like the bad or the negative or the eh, eh, eh. Like I, I want to be someone that finds and adamantly points out the good in brands and the good in, you know, people and situations because there's such a 
good, like a good genuine heart behind what they do. And I just think that it really should be talked about and it should be celebrated. Also, by the way, speaking of celebrated, this is the brush I just used, okay? This is that number five brush. This brush is the number 22. And oh my God, look at, look at this big old beefy girl. Okay, it's not in the concept store, not yet. Um, and I think full price, it's like a hundred dollar brush, which again, very high price point, but is it worth it? Absolutely. Like I, I have no doubt in my mind it is. Um, but when this comes into the concept store, because it will be, I'm sure when their brushes restock, I will 1000%. Okay. Have your notifications on, follow me on Instagram, follow me everywhere and make sure you're checking the community tab here on YouTube because I post so much over there. So many sales. Hell, just this weekend, I've already posted like probably 10 different sales that are going on. So make sure that you are following me here, that your notifications are on because as soon as this hits the concept store, it's going to sell out. You guys, this is one of the best freaking bra <laughs> This brush, it could like melt my soul. Okay. I highly recommend. Again, the 22 is gorgeous. It's a big old beefy beefcake and I, a beefy beefcake. Nothing like redundant. But anyways, with all of my refer conversation out of the way, um, I, I would apologize for being so long-winded, but like, you know what you get, okay? You saw this face when you clicked the video, bitch, you know what's coming. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the face. And normally I do this part on camera, but I'm gonna go ahead just for time's sake because we do have three other eye looks to get through. Um, and I've already talked a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead, run off of camera, finish everything up, and then I will be right back um, to kind of speed through the rest because I, I talk too much. All right, you guys, so while I was off camera, doing a mascara. I also did my lips because I was listening to a podcast and evidently for forgot that I needed to talk. So I went in with uh, both of these on my lips though. This is the Mented Lip Pencil in the shade Dope. And I paired that with a little bit of the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion in the shade Faded Clementine. And this pair together, by the way, especially this with this eye look is absolute perfection. Uh, but at this point, now we're ready to get into the rest of my thoughts as well as the other eye looks. And I think the way that I'm going to do this, just because obviously I don't want the video to be like forever and ever long um, is I'm going to go ahead and actually put up like maybe an overlay or something on the screen over here of me doing the eye look, applying and whatnot. And then while that's going on, I'm also going to go ahead and talk to you guys, give you kind of my thoughts and opinions. I'm going to go ahead and actually start off with the eye looks that I did um, before I started filming this video right here because I decided like kind of a last minute thing to throw on two more eye looks because I really wanted to play around with this palette before I like gave you guys my thoughts and opinions. I'm like the formula. Is it consistent and all of that? So I just sat down obviously no makeup No, nothing like that and I decided to come up with two like really simple straightforward You know kind of my day in the life type looks that would be you know really beautiful really bright and utilize those colors But also would still be true to my aesthetic. So while that's all kind of scrolling and doing its thing there Let's go ahead and start talking about um, obviously about the palette my thoughts So the first place that I want to go with this is actually to the consistency the overall, you know, was it blendable? Was it consistent from one shimmer to shimmer, matte to matte, all that kind of stuff? And I will tell you from my experience personally, after using, I would say almost every single shade, if not every single shade in here, um, I had not one issue from shade to shade. Everything blended beautifully. Like all the mattes were just absolutely butterific, okay? Running them through the crease, blending them in with these shimmers, great. All of the shimmers applied very evenly. I did have a little touch of fallout, um, but that's not too uncommon when you're dealing with like shimmers with infused glitters and stuff like that. So, you know, something to know. I was careful and, you know, had my foundation down and it was fine. If you are someone that finds, you know, maybe you're more prone to fallout, you get a little bit wild with the colors or maybe the amount of product, just try when you're tapping in like with your finger, tap off your finger to get rid of the excess. Or you can also go in with the glitter glue to really help everything, you know, stay put. Again, for me personally, I had no issues really with much of anything um, as far as all of the quality and the consistency goes. Now, all of that being said, in this palette, there is one of her cream to powder formula. It is this shade right here, the shade Acrobat the formula that she has played around with before. Look at that. Oh my God, such a beautiful shade. Um, and in the past, it hasn't been the most consistent or the most easy to use, but I found for today when I use this shade that it worked really well. All right, so for my final eye look here, I actually want to play around with the orange and the shade Aerialist right here, which by the way, the shade Aerialist and Snow Cone, those two colors right here, let me go ahead because I haven't done swatches yet, but these two shades are absolutely like mind-blowingly fantastic. And I mean, as far as, oh, oh my God, it's like platinum freaking 
reflective. Are you kidding me? Out of everything in this palette, I would say these are my two favorite shades because not only are they stunning and they're honestly, they, they have such an icy metallic shimmer feel to them that they're just, they're unparalleled in how gorgeous they are. And truthfully, on camera does not do them justice. But with these two shades, I think they're both so beautiful and so unique because these are two that you could literally pair with any eye look out of this palette. Like whether you're working with, you know, the oranges, the blues, the purples, I don't care what you're working with. One, one of these will work with that look and you can use it for anything. Whether you want to brighten it up, if you want to open up the inner eye, open up the center. I mean, even if you want to do like an accent inner eye brow bone situation, these would work beautiful for that. So out of the, again, the whole palette, I have to call out both of these. They're great. But anyways, all of that being said, the eye look that's hopefully scrolling on the screen here was the eye look that I really wanted to focus on for, you know, going out the door, going to work, and still seeing how I could utilize this in like a fun, really bright kind of way with all the bright colors, but still making it wearable. And so what I ended up doing was picking this shade right here, which is of the two, it's not the blue one. It's the more like icy kind of silvery purple type shade. And I ended up taking that and fading it into the orange and just creating like this really beautiful kind of blown out wing situation with it, really letting the orange take over that outer V. And it turned out to be such a beautiful, simple eye look. Like I expected it to look good because, you know, I love the colors together and the shades themselves are fantastic, but I didn't expect the, the way that they had like such a presence on my eye and the, the overall movement of the shades together was just absolute perfection. I think for me, my favorite thing about that eye look was just that it was so true to the colors. Like there, it was their full intensity. It was their full, like everything that they were giving me, you know, such a bright color, but at the same time, I was able to make them together work for me in the setting that I needed. And that's something where I, I know the shortfall of this palette is that it doesn't have a lot of that, right? It doesn't, doesn't really have a lot as far as making it workable and making it like the, the brown through the crease, you know, that sort of stuff. But I love that even though it doesn't have that going for it, it still does have such a workable feel to it. Like the shades themselves are so blendable and so easy to manipulate that you really can do a lot. Now from there, I want to move on to a couple critiques that I have with this palette. And I'm going to start off and keep in mind, I don't watch other reviews when I film these. So I don't know if this is just a me thing or what, but my first, and I think probably my biggest critique with this palette would have to be the layout of the shades. I do not care for the way that this is in here. And I do understand, you know, obviously the name of it, the Circo Loco palette or yeah, Circo Loco, which I think translates to the crazy circus or something like that. Um, so I, I can understand my point being that uh, it is supposed to have kind of a haphazard approach to it, right? I get that. But I think when you look at it, as far as creating an eye look, it is almost too haphazard to where you can't pair the, the things together. Like there's so many things in between that color theory, okay? The color theory of my brain just isn't working. And I think it would have been really behooving with this palette to put um, maybe, you know, like the oranges near each other or even to put complementing shades around each other. I just think that that would have been a really like helpful thing, especially when you're presenting a palette that is just so like over the top colorful and intense, you know, give it, giving it, uh, giving it a little bit more ease of use would not have necessarily been a bad thing, at least not in my opinion, which by the way, as a side note, you, it actually does have holes on the back here. So if you want to pop the shades out and put them somewhere else, you can do that. Um, I, I wouldn't cause then it'll change the shade names, but just, you know, it is your choice. If, and you want to, that's an option. Now, my only other critique with this is I would say the price point. I think that this one at $129 should have been one of her $65 palettes. Like it, sh it should have been smaller. It should have been, you know, priced more accordingly because this for a lot of people is going to be an accent palette. It's going to be something that's like a one and done look. And it's not like an everyday, at least not for most people, unless you love like super colorful shadows. Um, it's not like an everyday wearable palette. So most people aren't going to be able to justify the $129 price point just because you, um, j just because it's, you know, limited edition or because it's pretty or because the formula is great. Like people need more than that. Like they need to be able to see themselves using it over and over and really, you know, maximizing that value for themselves. And with this palette, I just, I, I struggle with that aspect of it. Again, not saying it's not worth it, not saying it's not good, but just the fact that it could have been a cheaper version of itself and it's not, um, I'm really just not a huge fan of. But that being said, I will just add on one little thing. Okay. I love this packaging. I think this is so freaking pretty. Like the overall look of it, this little Argyle situation. Oh, I just, I love the colors and that, you know, the random ones are foiled. I just think it's like super cutesy for a palette. Um, so that part I really love. But all right, you guys, at this point, I think I have said literally everything one could say about a palette. So now it is your turn. Leave me down in the comments, all of your thoughts and opinions on everything we talked about. The palette itself, are you wanting to check it out? Do you want to try and get it on sale um, during the Sephora sale? Do you like the eye looks? Do you like the color story, the layout? What are your general thoughts and opinions? Drop 
drop them all down in the comments. And then like I said at the start of the video, if you do want to shop the palette or anything else, my shirt, the other makeup I'm using, whatever, I will have it all linked down below. And then of course too, don't forget you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and follow me over on Instagram, all of which I would greatly, greatly appreciate, especially Instagram. But all right, you guys, that is officially it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching, and I hope that you all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my God, I've been in here for years. Oh, like I said, no, let us see you, no, let us see you. Oh my God. I just like everyone to know, I just ripped my honey bake ham ass thigh. I'm off this chair. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, I'm coming to you. Oh my God. I'm going home. Did, seriously, did I leave any skin on my thighs or what? Because, oh, it was like fly fucking duct tape paper. Oh my God. They say that thick thighs save lives, but I don't know that I believe that anymore. I'm starting to think that when they sweat, they just kill. They're like murderous little machine guns. Ouch.